time to have a look at the Navman wireless GPS or the um, Teletrack system. So let's get straight into it. The bench is powered up. The clock says 100 hours. And the multimeter is just kicked into life. And that's oh, 300 and... 300 milliamps to start with, just up to 290. Right, so what do we know about the system? Well, if you look at the Teletrack navman.co.nz website, there is absolutely subtle information about the hardware. Um, I've done some digging myself, so we'll, we'll start with the main tracker here. If we look on the back, the model's a Cube 300 HSPA. So there's a lot of um, load of stuff with this as well. So here we have the um, the GPS and GSM aerial built into one. We've got this beast of a unit to go with it, with an additional GPS aerial, which is huge. And there's also a plug here, which I presume is for your Garmin screen. Anyway, I'm mainly concerned about the current draw, so um, we'll just watch it. So it's what, 315 milliamps at the moment. So I've done some reading. I've been on the net. I've got the user manual for the, um, for the unit. And current consumption, 3.8 volts, well that's on 12, but hey, new enough. Um, it doesn't look too bad here, so sleep state, it's claiming it pulls under 3 milliamps. No information on how long it takes to go to sleep. Awake mode, mode on 70 milliamps, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and once a minute it peaks at 120 and yet it's got peak transmit current 250 battery charging an additional 150 that's quite a lot but we'll we'll just keep this recording and we'll find out how long it does actually take to drop down and go to sleep um, my biggest concern as an installer is the size of this thing I mean it's, it's as big as my hand with this as well it's it's very very cumbersome and where the hell would you install this in a lot of cars? As a as a comparison, this is the Vodafone Automotive um, SCD40 which I love, and I mean if I get this, it's almost the same size as their GPS aerial. So what else do I know about the unit? I've had a look on the back. Um, it's manufactured in China. Most of these systems tend to be. Um, and the user manual is super, super interesting. It's got, um, it's got a lot of information which I disagree with about the user manual. So um, I'll put a link to it in the blog. But it talks about yeah, your power connections on page number 20, saying, poke and wrap solderless connection. So it's suggesting you just get a bit of wire and wrap it around with, without soldering. I've, I've always believed that to be a complete no-no, and then they put some tape around it. Um, I think that's pretty Mickey Mouse, and it's, it's bad practice. And the other one is the photo of the earth connection which they've got here. I don't know how well that's going to show up on the screen, but um, they're saying drill a hole in the vehicle. Again, I'm not a fan of this. Most vehicles have a pretty good over the earth point and you can simply put a ring terminal on the factory bit, but again, I'm nitpicking here. What else do they talk about? Tamper evidence seal. So. First time I've, I've come across this, they're saying apply tamper evidence seal paste. I've never seen this. Um, probably it's nail polish, who knows. Um, 
but they're suggesting you um, mark up on the fuse so you can see if the fuse has been opened and if the tape's been dismantled. Quite why you do that, God only knows. Um, oh, and it takes 24 hours for the um, your temper seal to to harden up. Use nail polish, guys. Or oh, oh, oh. don't use anything. Solder your connections. Right, where are we? We're five minutes in, and it's still pulling 143 milliamps. It's um, it's hungry. Um, it's making the AVS actually look normal at this stage. Um, Navman's a pretty well known brand, so I expect it to be a lot better so far. But obviously, there's a battery that needs to charge up. Um, let's see if it drops down to sleep mode um, quickly because the Vodafone Automotive on the seven minute mark did drop down to 2.3 milliamps. Oh, and a, a little information on the tracker. This one was sent to me by one of my friends who's removed it from a Nissan Leaf. Um, the unit was installed in 2019 or, or later because that's the, the date on the sticker. Um, yeah, and I know Nissan Leafs do not like parasitic drain on their batteries. They're shocking for it. Um, well known if you've got an electric vehicle, especially a Nissan. I, I own one. They they hate power consumption. Also, while I'm um, waffling away, if you have a GPS tracker, which I have not tested, feel welcome to send it to me and um, I'll chuck it on the bench and um, find out. Yep, seven minute mark. The Vodafone Automotive was at 2.3 milliamps. This is currently on 243. So I could have 100 of these in my car, more than 100 of these, to achieve the current current draw. That's a beast. We are one hour into the Navman Cube 300 current draw test and it's sitting on 222 milliamps. I will give this thing another hour and then I will report back. Um, bearing in mind, the literature says this should be pull, pulling less than three milliamps when it goes to sleep. However, there is no information on their website or anywhere that I can find that mentions how long it goes to sleep. I've also emailed them. Um, it's been about four, maybe five days now. It has been the weekend, I admit, but I mean, haven't heard back yet either. Okay, we've just hit the two hour mark on the bench and this thing is still pulling about 95 milliamps. It's fluctuating a bit, it's all over the show, but yeah, 95 milliamps. Oh, just dropped up, dropped, just gone up to 120, back down to 95. Yeah, so what's really disappointing is I don't understand why they haven't configured this so it goes to sleep once the ignition's turned off. The ignition's off on this thing. 
if it's got an internal battery that needs charging, why don't you have it charging whilst the engine is running? Just a suggestion. Um, anyway, I'm um, going to leave this running overnight because I need to get some sleep. And I'll be back in about eight, nine hours and um, we'll see what the multimeter is telling us in the morning and see if it does drop down to the claimed three milliamps. Good night, see you tomorrow. Good morning. So I've got up, I've had my coffee and I've turned this back on and I said I turned it back on, it's been on all night. This has been on the bench for over 12 hours, 12 and a half hours, in fact. And this little sucker is still pulling 53 milliamps. It's fluctuating. You can see it here. Um, <laughs> I have to go to work now, so I will again leave this on the bench and um, I'll report after my day's work. So I'm off to do a Suvery. Obviously, I'm not going to fit one of these because um, I respect the car's battery. I will report back later. We are 13 hours into the video and this thing has finally dropped down to 12.5 milliamps. Um, I will keep it running but it's looking a bit more promising, but still well off the three milliamp or less that the system claims. Right, end of a day's work. This thing has been on the bench now for 24 hours. Well, okay, almost 23 hours and 56 minutes, if I'm going to be precise. Let's not split hairs. And the multimeter is reading 12.54 milliamps. So that's basically the same as what it was when I went to work this morning. Um, yeah. Um, what I have noticed, I have done some tests before I filmed this video, is this thing will wake up with the slightest vibration. So I'm just going to focus on the multimeter here. And I focus and I'm gonna hit the bench and when I say hit I mean tap the bench watch this hold on that that was just a gentle thud and it's woken the tracker up it's very very sensitive it's like a super sensitive shock sensor so the slightest vibration and you know, in Wellington, that could be the wind, wakes this thing up, and then it's right back up to ah, uh, sixty milliamps, sixty-five. So, the the literature does say you want to secure it to a, a solid surface, but I've done that. It's on my bench here, and um, you know that that's pretty sorted it is flat and the bench is built like a brick shit house i mean it's bolted to the floor it's got metal legs it's bolted to the wall it's more solid than you're ever going to find in a car and yet this thing wakes up with a tap anyway that's um all i've really got to say about the um the teletrack navman wireless gps system um if you want to buy one that's down to you. You can make your own decision, hey? Hope you've enjoyed.